Hello everyone, this is China Paradigm, where we, Dashi Consulting, interview seasoned entrepreneurs in China. Hello everyone, I'm Matthew David, the founder of Dashi Consulting and his podcast, China Paradigm. And today, I am with someone I met like eight years ago uh, when I had another business, which was a, a smart box business for the French who know, gift box business. And he was started his own business, uh, um, a, a, a website selling wine online at discounting price. I am today with Adrian Fabry, now at the new role as general manager of Forces Asia, uh, based in Shanghai. I feel Asia, but a lot doing on China. And Forces is, um, you present it as a social commerce agency. Um, that has been a change over the couple of years in terms of positioning and identity uh, of the agency. Uh, to focus on social, and you wanted us to insist on the fact that you are a social commerce agency. Previously, uh, you have been a, a sales entrepreneur, a sales entrepreneur, sorry. Uh, you have started two businesses, back and forth with M&A, with finance, so you're also a finance guy. And you have been uh, working in the wine industry, so from, from your LinkedIn, it is from 2012 to 2016. And you started Z9H.cn in Chinese, Zhen Zhuhui, um, to sell wine at a discounted price. Basically, I think, and you will correct me, flash sales for wine in China. Um, you have run this business for close to five years, changed the business model several times, uh, used the different tools. So the beginning of WeChat, because when you began, WeChat was I think unknown. And I think at the end, uh, in 2016, it was a major channel for, for, for getting in touch with people. So you have seen the digital industry evolving with your business. You have experienced it. You have a quiet client yourself. You are very hands-on experience. And I like to this um, exchange. We talked about both. This very hands-on experience you have Starting the business, hiring, uh, getting client, acquiring client online, using new tools like WeChat, new CRM, social CRM, and now working for large companies. Um, you will name the ones you would like to name, uh, but uh, large companies from all over the world, some from France, some from uh, Canada, some from um, the US, a bit everywhere in the world. Thank you very much. Adrian, for being with us. I'm very excited to have you on the show. You were in the list for a long time. So thank you for, for being here. Thank you, Matt. No problem. Matthew. So, <laughs> Matthew, Matt. Uh, so first question, as always, I ask, what's the size of your business currently? You can give different metrics. Could be revenues, could be number of people, could be number of cases, number of, of uh, clients in a year. Talking about Shanghai, talking about the world. Yes, uh, so now uh, Fossis Agency targets uh, to make 10 million RMB of revenue this year. And uh, we'll, we are 25 people to, I think we'll be 25 to 30 at the end of the, of the year. <laughs> do you include the, in 20, 10 million, do you include the budget you spend? The marketing budget? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. We include so there are a lot of... Um, uh, budget, media buying, rewards that we are also uh, buying for our clients, uh, and I include it in this number. Okay, okay. How, how, how many clients have you served so far? I think now we have, uh, as a retainer based, we have around 15, and uh, maybe project based and retainer based together a little bit less than 30. That's one thing I, I like to understand. Uh, you are working for some very large companies. Uh, and you talk now about retainer. Does it mean that you are the exclusive agencies of them, which 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 looks like you are working sometimes more on specific campaign, like the travel website you work for, uh, and uh, some of them maybe you are the exclusive agency. How do you work with your clients? Yeah, so in, in, in agency model, you have uh, basically, uh, especially in social media, two kinds of services that you can provide. One is more retainer-based, and it's about social media operation, taking care of the account, while another one is uh, campaign-based. So in this case, it's more about projects, uh, whether marketing or technical. And um, 
Um, it depends on the clients. For some of them, we have only retainers. For some of them, we are only project-based. And for some of them, we are doing everything. So it depends okay. on, um, on their structure and their organization. Uh, it's actually quite interesting to see that um, all the companies and the marketing departments of brands, they have their different ways to work with agencies. So some of them, they use a lot of different agencies. Some of them, they only use for a social media part, or it depends on also their own resources. So yeah, it's, it's, we have to be flexible on that. I see. Um, for the companies which are listening to us, uh, entrepreneurs who are listening to us, at which um, minimum budget you think uh, it's possible to, to work on, on a retainer or to work on a campaign? Could you give some metrics of the minimum to spend to, to be active online in, in China? Um, I always, so this is a question that uh, I often have, and not only for entrepreneurs, actually, even also for brands, because they don't always have a huge marketing budget for China, especially when they are starting and they are not sure of the ROI they can get. Um, but I would say um, between 60 to uh, 100,000 uh, US dollars for a year. Okay. I think is 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 the minimum, is the minimum. So yeah, it's important that um, um, WeChat is a very demanding social uh, media platform, and um, it's especially in terms of content creation, it's ex extremely uh, um, uh, you know resource consuming. So you need to have this minimum budget as a uh, entry uh, for the entry market. I see, I see. So you mentioned that to me before we started that you really wanted to be introduced at a social commerce agency. Could you tell us more about this positioning you have and fighting on social commerce? Yes. Um, so Fosseis before was uh, an agency of uh, uh, technical development of native application, right? Uh, and when they started... Uh, this business in uh, in China, um, most of the revenues were coming from that part. Um, but from my let me just to make sure that people know native apps, meaning that uh, that apps made for iOS, apps made for Android, and not a web app that you open through your browser, not a web app which is embarked within uh, the icon of the of of, of the. Of, of the app, it was uh, native. So using the, the code from iOS and the code from Android, that's what you were doing mainly. Yeah, actually today I can even say out of WeChat. So any kind of application we build outside of WeChat um, is called a native app. So yes, you're right. It's exactly this for the iOS. So um, this was uh, the first uh, activity here, um, but um, because people are spending so much time on WeChat, um, it's more um, smart, it's smarter to, um, to build the application inside the system. So um, we started to uh, launch this, uh, this service uh, in 2017. And um, we also saw that we could add uh, a marketing service linked to this um, technical service because once you build a mini program or an application, it's good also to help the clients to get the traffic. So we also started uh, the service of, uh, of marketing. I see. So you are mentioning H5, basically. H5 website to our mini program to open through WeChat. That the switch has been to build on mainly WeChat. When we, we talk about social commerce in China, uh, correct me if, if I'm wrong, but we mainly talk about WeChat. Um, is, it, is it correct? So back in 2017 and actually back in 2016, uh, yes, but now social commerce can be also uh, through any, most, mostly any kind of platform. But yes, at that time, yes. So when you say any kind of platform, does it mean that now you see that social commerce is working also on Taobao with integration of Weibo? Uh, does it work also? Xiaong uh, Shu is, is a case actually the, of, of, of e-commerce built on, on being social. Do you have other cases you have in mind that you, where you see leverage within your your your, your positioning, which is social commerce, besides yes. uh, WeChat? So you mentioned the right platform. So Weibo now you have a very uh, obvious link to Tmall. 
Um, WeChat, you have also obvious links to Jindong and uh, Douyin. So TikTok, you can also uh, bring the traffic to Tmall. Mm. So uh, Xia Hongshu, everything is, so Little Red Book, sorry, everything is um, integrated. So the idea is how can I, can I bring my social traffic to the last step of conversion that is the sales, right? Um, and today for all the applications, there is a way, there is a path. So that's uh, why uh, social commerce is now more and more um, uh, easy, I would say, compared to a few, uh, few years ago. Uh, because yeah, you're right, back in 2016, 17, WeChat was actually the main platform. So to go back to uh, your initial question, um, 2016, 17, we decided to shift uh, the business model of the agency to a, a social commerce agency, meaning that we have our own technical team, developers. They are building application, HTML5 mini program inside WeChat. And we have also to help the brand to uh, get more business from this investment, this asset, um, by uh, bringing more traffic. So this is where uh, our marketing service, uh, we launched a, mar a marketing service. And actually our marketing service this year is uh, uh, 65% of our revenue, so even 70% maybe. So it's I getting see. bigger. So the IT technical part is now a little bit shrinking because we have a lot of demand on that, uh, that side. Okay, when you build, um, I, I like to actually um, understand better on the technical part, even though it's, it's less what you do now. Uh, when you build a mini program or you build H5 on WeChat, do you have already frameworks existing or you have to build from scratch all the time or you have to create your own framework? In the West, when you want to open a website, you go on Shopify if you want to sell. Uh, I mean, more and more people go on Shopify or they go on Magento or they use WordPress, WooCommerce. The, the, the frameworks are, are existing and, and quite powerful, very easy to use actually, even from someone who is not technical. What about WeChat, the ecosystem uh, in China? Yes, it's actually one of the reasons why uh, our technical uh, service uh, part is um, is getting uh, lower and lower in our uh, revenue breakdown. It's actually a very good point you mentioned, is that we have a lot of uh, um, products available to rent, uh, frameworks that we can customize. And uh, instead of, um, you know, even this is something I advise to all the clients now, is that instead of building uh, your own mini program as an e-commerce, um, and uh, starting from zero, you can also rent uh, a platform. So you have a lot, a lot of different uh, frameworks. You have a very local one, Chinese one, and uh, a lot of them are very uh, good deal and actually really, really good in terms of user experience. And you have also international ones. Um, so it depends also on the, 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 the client needs. Would you like mention, mentioning some of them you, you, you think are the most advanced, the, the one you prefer? Yeah, so you have, I mean, there is one very uh, famous in China. Uh, it's called Yojan. So Yojan mm. uh, is providing a lot of services inside WeChat to, uh, for, for social commerce. They have mini programs and they have also um, HTML5 applications. Um, and then you have also some... Uh, uh, other offers from um, from agencies or from uh, service providers, um, and they, they can they can give you uh, um, a service like that. So, for instance, um, there is an agency called Thirty One Ten, okay, a uh, mm -hmm. French based in Shanghai. So, for instance, they are also um, providing this kind of uh, service of of framework. So, we can work with them for some projects. We can also work with Yojan. We have um, a lot of different uh, offers. I see, I see. Um, in, in your presentation, you talk about social commerce, so about paid social. You talk also about chatbots. Is it something you mentioned because that's something you are able to do? Is it something that clients are really using or is it still at the infancy and, and, and the use is not, is, not, um, is not mainstream? What about chatbots? A lot of people talk about it, but I, I, I feel I haven't seen many, to be honest. Yeah, um... I think it depends on how it's being used. And um, so it depends on the, 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 the client needs and how they use their WeChat account. Um, but we have, for instance, um, a travel platform as a client and they have a huge WeChat account. 
uh, it's more than half million followers and we have every day a lot of new followers in this account because this account is, be, is being used as the main customer service tool for them. So um, if the user or the client from this brand, uh, from this travel platform uh, brand has a problem, uh, instead of using the, the call or sending email, they use WeChat. So because of that, of course, the, the, the customer service is uh, really big and all the inquiries that are being processed through WeChat. And uh, in this case, the chatbot is super useful, for instance, because uh, it's helping um, the brand at the beginning to filter all the demands. So this is an example um, where it really works. And then um, we have uh, um, other projects where um, the WeChat is probably not uh, the, the, the focus okay, on the, in the strategy or, or it's not used as a tool of customer service that much. And then in this case, it's true that I would not recommend to, uh, to, to have a chatbot because maybe it's too heavy uh, mm-hmm. in uh, technical requirements and development for uh, not a lot of traffic and, and inquiries. Because there is a lot of talk about chatbot, but chatbot is an AI, but actually chatbot is not, is not that smart. In fact, it's answering very precise questions most of the time, um, as far as I understand. Um, it's not like a pure artificial intelligence. Um, uh, could you tell, tell us uh, how you configure the chatbot? Are you working on the configuration of the chatbot? Are there some existing frameworks? Uh, what do you suggest to use um, uh, chatbots for? So you said that when you have a large audience, yes. When you don't have, it's not useful. Uh, do you have other parameters? And, uh, and uh, f- um, can you share about the frameworks, more in details about how to use chatbots? So you have you have two kind of chatbots. You have um, you're right. Um, there there are some of the chatbots that are not involving AI. So for these chatbots, actually, it's kind of an auto auto re- automatic auto reply function. Um, and this one is is quite simple. And I would advise to use this one um, at the beginning if the account doesn't have too many um, inquiries or too many followers. Uh, but you have also some chatbots involving AI. Okay, it's um, it's uh, uh, you know it's like um, Siri style uh, chatbots. Okay, I would say it's a, it's a chatbot where you can ask question and the chatbot can answer the question even if there was not a, a configuration uh, from the beginning because there is an AI behind. So this one typically can be uh, used when you have a, a big account with a lot of followers and a lot of inquiries. Um, but I would say at the beginning, you open an account, uh, maybe you can set some automatic auto replies. Uh, actually, it's still a lot of work. If there are, I don't know, uh, 100 to 1,000 questions to handle in a auto reply, automatic auto reply, then um, if they, this account is used really as a customer service, uh, function for the, the customers, maybe um, having a, an AI behind uh, can be smarter. So what you are saying is that you configure the answers to the questions. That's that's what. How do you do? Do you work with a chatbot? You configure the, the answers to the questions, uh, and you have already existing framework in China for Chinese clients. So for the automatic uh, reply function, it's actually provided by WeChat by Tencent. So this one is, is quite easy to, uh, to deal with. Um, and then if there is a AI function, then you need to work with developers to uh, implement it. And then it's another story and there is a AI motor that is actually uh, um, providing the answer and, and getting the inquiries. Which is providing that? Or which is only providing the automatic answers? Automatic answers. Oh, okay, the AI-powered uh, chatbot is an external provider. It would be external you provider. provider. You have to use an external technology and, and link it to the, to the account, exactly. Okay. And do you feel them reliable? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, honestly. it's. Um, I mean, if you have a super um, complex auto-reply function uh, where you handle all the questions and you have, uh, you know, uh, actually already... Uh, um, imagined all the, 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 the thousands of possib- possibilities of question that could be handled, maybe you don't need an AI. But if you don't want to spend that much time in, uh, in this part, you can work with an AI. But in this case, there is a lot of time at development. Okay. Um, for even, the... 
it depends on how, for both of them, it depends on how it's being implemented. So they can, both of them can work. For the audience to understand precisely. So uh, if I want to interact with an official account on WeChat, um, you, you are going to follow them and then you can answer them questions, right? On the official account and you will get an automatic answer from the official account. Yeah, exactly. So there is right. a function in the official account of the brand to interact with the brand. So okay. when you're actually talking to um, a brand through this, this function, you have either a real person talking to you, this is also possible, mm -hmm. um, or a chatbot, or both. Is this something you always parameter when you create a WeChat account for a client, when you, when you start a campaign, do you always configure it? Um, automatic answers or that's uh, specific specific cases? No, no, no. It's, it's very specific to the business. So um, if we start a new account uh, for a brand and we know that there would not be a lot of inquiries at the beginning, we don't, we don't even mention that point because it's, uh, um, you know, it's extra cost for the brand. And uh, if, it's, if it's, there is no use at the beginning, we, we, we don't have this. So okay. it depends on the cases. Okay. Um, social commerce. So we understood, I, I go back, social commerce agency. We talked about WeChat. We talked about new uh, new platforms like TikTok doing in Chinese. Um, we talked about Weibo, Xiaong, Shu. Uh, are you seeing all the platforms to make sure we covered all, all the, the platforms you are leveraging now? Well, in one of the cases you sent to me, you say, we choose the right platform for you. We choose the right social platform for you. That gave me the idea that from your perspective, now the Chinese social media ecosystem is a bit more fragmented. And that's really that's the point you, uh, you, you, you had before. In 2016, it was only WeChat. Now we have more. My, was my understanding correct when I read your, 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 your case? Is the social media now more fragmented? Um... I would, I would not say fragmented because if you say fragmented, it means that it's kind of exclusive, right? Uh, but it's just more, it's just that you have uh, more opportunity to reach the, um, the potential clients. So depending on the brands, depending on what they're selling, um, we know that we have more chances of finding their clients in this app or this app. So because we know the audience of every app, and um, then in this case, we can, we can give uh, advice. For instance, now we have um, more and more beauty brands coming to, to us, cosmetic brands. Um, and we know that a lot of um, uh, their potential clients, they are in Little Red Book, because uh, if you check the audience of Little Red Book, it's mostly a woman between uh, 25 to 35 year old in China. So, of course, um, we advise them to go and invest in this platform because they, ha they have all their potential clients there. While um, Weibo or uh, Douyin, Douyin has a younger audience, uh, maybe it's for another project. So, we, it depends on, on the industries and their, the products and the price. The first, uh, historically speaking, the first social media was Weibo. Weibo in China. Weibo uh, invested uh, a lot a few years ago on live streaming and connection with uh, with Taobao and Tmall. What what do you see as a leverage from Weibo now? Is live streaming still something hot now for social commerce, or it is past now with the existence of WeChat and so on? And 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 uh, and generally speaking, what about Weibo? No, so. Every, every social media platform um, has an audience and users. So the idea is how can we bring these users to the, the final step of conversion, the sales. Um, if there is a pass, then we use it. Um, if there is a chance to bring these followers as a, as a, to, to, to bring them as in, in a platform where they can become clients, then we, we can use it. Live stream is just one of the ways. So what live stream is a, is a way to, uh, to do it, but they can be also, uh, uh, they, we have other ways, like we can have a posting or a, a video. It doesn't necessarily have to be a live stream. So whatever, whatever it takes, right? Um, if it works, then we do it. So for Weibo, 
for some of our brands, um, if we try to uh, bring the, 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 the followers to a, a sales, it doesn't work. Then we don't do it. We try, it doesn't work, we stop. And for, our, for some of our brands, it works super well. Then we, we, uh, we continue to invest in this channel. So basically, um, imagine that uh, um, for every social media tool that is being provided in China, and mostly, of course, so WeChat, we've mentioned them before, WeChat, Weibo, uh, Little Red Book, and, uh, and Douyin, so TikTok, for, for these four um, social media tools, the, the, the strategy is the same, is first, we um, acquire the followers. Okay. Mm. Second, uh, make sure they are qualified leads. So trying to uh, express the DNA of the brand, uh, communicate with them and trying to uh, um, explain them why the brand is different and why there is a real uh, added value. And then the, the, the third step is sell them, sell them the product. And then the fourth step is sell them again to make sure that they become loyal clients. So, Whatever, whatever the tool, uh, Weibo, WeChat, uh, doing it's it's the same uh, because for brands providing content uh, is um, is is for free. Huh? Providing content for free um, is not a good deal, right? Uh, unless you can uh, leverage this investment by getting clients from this channel. So that's what we're doing. And for Weibo, to go back to your initial question, yes, there are ways to do it, um, and depending on the brands, it can be more or less efficient. So we, 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 how would you um, uh, qualify Weibo now? How would you position Weibo compared um, to the other? So in, in terms of uh, potential of ROI, okay, so financially speaking, really like uh, uh, can I make money on Weibo? If this, is, if, if this is your question, I would place it in the third position. I would say that uh, after it, dep it depends on the, the industries, but generally speaking, uh, probably... Um, first WeChat, second Little Red Book, third Weibo, and fourth uh, Douyin. But this is a very general ranking that is actually... Uh, of course. Uh, it's not... It, when we talk more about specific industries, then the ranking is, is evolving. For instance, beauty, I, put Little Red, I would put Little Red Book first, of course, and then second WeChat, so, and then Weibo. So it depends on, um, on the, the, the tools, and it depends also on what you do. It's a price. I mean, you, you uh, the, the problem with Little Red Book is that it's both an e-commerce and a social um, a social platform as well. But you don't mention Fonantimo. You don't men, men, mention uh, uh, the, the one of the biggest platforms. Why don't you mention it? Because Tmall is not a social media. Tmall is a marketplace. So Tmall, Jindong, they are marketplaces, and this in this agency we are experts of. Um, uh, social media and out channels. So generally for a brand, um, okay. when you make your business plan, you have in-channel and out-channel. In-channel, it's uh, investment in marketplaces. So uh, e-commerce operator, marketplaces, Tmall partners, uh, Jindong, um, and Tmall, of course. And then you have out-channels, and these are investments in other channel to bring you more coverage, and, but also trying to bring you more traffic. So um, we are the specialists of the art channel. So this is a very different strategy. And generally, so you have, that's what I, I usually say when I present our, our agency. You have two kinds of agencies uh, in China. You have agencies specialized in in-channel. And usually they are direct conversion experts because most of the people, uh, they are coming to the marketplace to buy stuff. So for you, the challenge is, how can I make sure uh, my product will be displayed and I will uh, create the, 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 the I, will, I will make the deal. While for agencies like us, we are out channels experts. So we are more indirect conversion experts. So it's a very different strategy because we are not talking to people uh, who, um, who want to buy products. We are talking to an audience and actually they don't want to buy the product. So they don't want to be bothered. So we need to find a very uh, smart strategy uh, and a marketing and communication uh, uh, strategy to, uh, to create the demand in a different way. So that's actually uh, what we're doing here. Okay, I understand. Uh, we, I interviewed someone from Parklu uh, a few weeks ago 
Uh, and that's the last part we have not mentioned about social commerce, I feel, I mean, the last big part, which is uh, influencers and KOL. Um, Xiaorong Shu has been based, uh, developed a lot on KOL, especially foreign, I mean, overseas KOL, starting in Hong Kong to sell uh, products from overseas. Um, you mentioned Xiaorong Shu. Um, clearly, we are doing our tools for influencers and KOL. What's your... Um, What's your takeaway to work with KOL? We know it's expensive. Uh, we know it can be effective. Uh, what could you give us some parameters on how to work with KOL and influencer from your experience? So it's also my answer is going to be very um, general, but it's going to be general, but it depends on the industry. I think um, from our experience, um, we get. Uh, a better performance uh, with KOL depending on the industries and of course the KOL we're working with. Um, but generally speaking, if I just talk about cost of acquisition of a follower, um, it is not the most effective way for us. We have a lower cost of acquisition with advertisement channel. So, uh, it's social. Yes, paid social, exactly. So uh, in Weibo, we have uh, Waze with a, a tool called Fensetong. And then in WeChat, we have um, Tencent advertising. Our cost of acquisitions, they are lower uh, on these channels um, rather than uh, with the KOL. But with the KOL, what has to be analyzed is also the quality of those followers. Um, and it's true that we have uh, uh, probably more qualified followers from KOL. So the, the, the followers that we will most likely convert into clients, they are, it depends again in the industries, and, 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 but they are, they are probably more from the KOL. Um, but it's complex. It depends on the client. It depends on the industry. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, um, it's, it's complex to analyze, but I would say that um, when you build a strategy, Uh, you have a lot of different, you have to identify all your channels of acquisition of, uh, of followers and KOL is one of them, but you have other ones. You have a lot of other ones. You can be very creative. Um, you can uh, do uh, offline events. Uh, you can do advertising. So yeah, KOL is one of the way. You, you, you mentioned paid social. I think that's something then you, you may actually Uh, leverage more for your clients. Uh, so I, 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 I think that could be a, a good topic to, to, to dig in. Um, could, you, could you tell us more about uh, the minimum budget to advertise to use paid social on, I mean, paid, paid advertisement on 10 cent on a, which, which ad basically? Do you have a minimum budget? It depends on the industries because um, you will... But to activate... An account because I remember like a few years ago you had you 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 had to invest minimum uh, 500,000 uh, GMB uh, to, to the minimum budget. No, no, this is not the case anymore. Um, so okay. yes, for moments ads inside WeChat, um, you need to. But actually, I think this has been updated. Even I need to check with my team. But you need to. Um, there is a minimum spending per day. Uh, so okay. uh, Roughly, what, what do we talk about? 1,000, 10,000? Uh, it, it changed recently, and I, I, I think we're talking about um, 1 to 3,000 per day. Or, uh, okay, so it's affordable. Yeah, I think now, now it's affordable. Now it's, uh, it's possible to, uh, to do advertising in all the platforms, even with a minimum budget. It's true, it, okay. was, not the case. it was not the case a few years ago, but now it's, yeah. it's okay. So, okay, uh, how precise can you target then? Ah, how uh, precisely? Uh, hmm. ne never enough, never enough. <laughs> Because would... compared to Facebook, uh, Facebook has been very good at targeting so precisely. Uh, you could target people from other companies, from competitors, following competitors, liking competitors, or uh, even uh, locally speaking on a city. I felt, I, I felt for a long time that Tencent and WeChat especially was uh, behind, way behind. Uh, what, what, what's, your, what's the status now? Uh, we, yeah. can, we can target on genders, we can target on types of cities. What are the parameters? So I, 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 I'm not sure we can say behind um, or maybe they are, they are advanced because it's just they, they, they 
it's not part of their priority to uh, to give too many information of the of their consumers of their users to uh, other people. Uh, that's not part of their business model. While uh, Facebook, it clearly became a, a, a priority for them is to be as precise as possible in the in the targeted marketing. Um, it's just that they 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 don't believe in that, uh, and they think they have to protect their users. That's actually a lot that I always felt every time I've met people from WeChat and Tencent that their priority was how can we uh, protect our users from um, the, 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 from 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 all the, the possible advertising and and uh, and annoying annoying uh, uh, you know um, annoying contact with with a brand. So it's also I'm not sure. It's I think it's on purpose. I think it's on purpose and. Um, um, it's not that detailed compared to Facebook, but we can still target the cities, we can target the genders, uh, we can target interests, um, and actually even outside of China, we can target per country. So um, we have a, a department store as a client, and we uh, we are activating all the tourists when they are in France. Um, okay, so travelers, you can tar- you can target Chinese travelers when they are overseas. You can target not people who are living overseas, but when they are overseas. Yes, exactly, um, and um, it's it's okay. I mean, it's enough. I think with the result we get, uh, the cost of acquisition of a, of a follower of, of a client uh, with the current level of uh, of profiling from uh, from the advertisement is fine. Um, How does it charge? It's a CPM, right? Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. But I think it's um, I think it's on purpose. I don't think it's um, I think ten cents. They did that on purpose. Um, because they want to mm-hmm. So um, you, you said that we can begin to advertise uh, at 1,000, 3,000 MMB per day. Uh, do you, can, could you share some metrics on CPM, min max, or something average? You said something you would say expensive, something you would say inexpensive for CPM and WeChat. Uh, yeah. So for this part, not really, because uh, me, I only care about the cost of acquisition of uh, followers. So I only care about this final metric. And uh, for the, the CPM, it's more my team handling that. And I, I sorry, I don't have uh, enough data to share. Um, okay. Because this is the first step. And the final step at some point is just the cost of acquisition. So for me, so, uh, when I work with them, I only care about this. Okay. Metric. So let, let's talk about the cost of acquisition. In your deck, you mentioned a cost of acquisition of 20 GMB for one of your clients, less than 20 GMB. Um could, could you mention uh, the parameters to take into account in cost of acquisition and what to what to think of for followers, not necessarily for clients, uh, for followers? Uh, what what is a, a low cost? What is a high cost? And uh, parameters to consider. So um, I think this is uh, this would be the same answer to a cost of acquisition of a client. Uh, it depends on the the quality of the um, the follower you get. Uh, so if it's a follower that you will uh, turn into a client that will uh, uh, place a lot of orders, maybe you don't mind to spend 100 RMB. So sure. um, it depends on many things. It depends on what you're selling. Um, it depends on um, so the margin, the, your average basket per order, uh, the margin you make, and uh, how likely the followers, the followers will buy again your products. Um, so is 20 RMB a good deal or not? Uh, I think it depends on the industries and what you're selling. If you're selling a chocolate, uh, maybe not, right? But if you're selling a, a fashion, if you're a fashion brand and you're selling expensive uh, dresses or shoes, or uh, maybe maybe it's a very good deal, right? So um, it's very complex to judge um, the, 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 the cost of acquisition. Is it a good or a bad cost? because it depends also on the behavior of the follower after. But I would say that you need to just to find something, you need to find a range that you think is reasonable according to your cost of acquisition of clients and your, your margin and your expectation of uh, um, orders. If in your plan, you want your client to spend a, a certain um, amount per orders and at least place a five order or 10 orders in a year, uh, maybe you can you can afford to pay uh, to pay a little bit more. So uh, you said that you you said that you focus on the cost per acquisition and less the CPM because it's it's more linked to performance and so on. I understand that. 
Uh, does it mean that when you design a campaign, you have hypotheses initially on your on your CPC? How do you how do you initiate a campaign, creative campaign, and so on? There's a creative part where you can go anywhere in every direction, and there's a very rational part. How much does it does it bring in terms of business? Uh, do you, so you do use these metrics, and do you have assumptions before you start a campaign on the on the um, cost per click, or cost per acquisition? Yes, yes, of course. I mean, this is driving all our all our. Uh, uh, strategies here in Fosseis. So we are we only care about that. We only care about the cost of acquisition. So everything we do uh, is based on that. So that's why when we work with uh, uh, KOL or advertising, for instance, when we take decision whether we work with this KOL or not, or with um, this channel uh, of advertising or not, is uh, is um, what what is what would be what we think will be the, the cost of acquisition at the end. Uh, if we think it's too expensive, then we don't go. It's the way we take decision is, uh, okay, um, this channel, according to our experience, cost of acquisition is high. Then we don't do it. Uh, it depends also on the client, what they are looking for. If that's a point they really want to target the volume rather than the value, or if they want to uh, target the value and try to convert faster. So um, it, it, we, we listen to the client needs, and depending on, on what they're looking for, uh, in, we, we see how the, the, the media investment, social media investment can fit in their strategies. So this, this, is, uh, this is the way we do it. And cost of acquisition is the, the most important metric. Let, if you don't mind, uh, let's go into the specific cases. Um, I, I, let's mention a shoemaker you work with, uh, not mentioning the name of, of, the, of the client. Uh, you are saying that uh, you have been able to get this actually cost of acquisition of 20 GMB uh, in, in, the, in this case, uh, and that you have been able to recruit 3,000 uh, followers within one week for, uh, I think it's a, it's a, a luxury shoemaker, as I understand. Uh, could you tell us what you did in order to have this low uh, acquisition of followers? Because 20 GMB for luxury shoemaker, I believe, uh, it's low to acquire 20 GMB and 3,000 within a week. Yeah, it's very low and it's a very nice uh, campaign. Um, I think it's one of our most successful campaign because we haven't invested a lot of money in uh, in, in media and uh, we got a lot. We brought a lot of clients for this brand. I think it's quite specific because this brand is a niche uh, brand. It's a um, um, I would say premium to luxury uh, shoemaker in uh, Europe. That is not uh, that is not in, that is not in China yet. So there is a natural demand from the market where the shoes lover, the shoes experts, the male male shoe lover and experts, they they want to get this product, but it's not really uh, easy for them to get the product. And the only way to buy is the website from, um, from, from Europe. So um, we targeted KOL. We worked with uh, KOL uh, for this, uh, this project. Um, and we identified the ones that really have in their uh, audience and followers portfolio shoes lover. So we found this KOL and we, um, we worked with them to make sure that during our campaigns, we would attract all the shoes lover in, in, into this account. Actually, for a brand like that, 2,000, 3,000 followers is not a lot. It's not a lot, but uh, if they are all clients, it's fine. I mean, they are very happy. They, they don't care. They don't mind. To, they prefer to have an account of 3,000 followers and uh, 2,500 of them, they are their clients, rather than an account with uh, 50,000 followers and only 100 of them are their clients. So um, very niche, very qualified, well-targeted, extremely high conversion rate. So this, this one is, is a great example of uh, what we do. Is uh, For this one, actually, it's, it was also a requirement from the client that they are super self-oriented and it was a test for them um, to, uh, to take a decision if they would go to China or not. So we did two campaigns. We recruited shoes lover, uh, male shoes lover in their account. Every time we post an article, we can see that the... Um, page view, the ratio, uh, the, the re readership rate is really higher than any other accounts. Why? Because most of the people are super qualified and interested. And every time we push a promotion, we can immediately see there is a peak of traffic from China uh, to the website. So through Google Analytics, 
And we can see we have uh, a lot of orders that we actually generate from, uh, from WeChat. So this is a very pure social commerce uh, case study that is very interesting to analyze. Um, let me let, 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 let me sure. Um, I want to be sure I understand. They, they didn't have any problem in China, so only a, a foreign website. So I I guess uh, the you go through to the URL and you have you can buy it from online from their own website, not using a platform, um, not using a, a, a marketplace. And uh, you created a WeChat account for them, and you yeah. sold through this WeChat account. But how did you create a WeChat account if they are not present in China? Because most of the time the WeChat account. And the WeChat uh, shop needs to be linked to a company, or it was when it changed already. So now, now you can create overseas account. So but it's very is, new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very new. So they are actually now creating an overseas account. Um, so we use another company to open this account first. Okay. Um, and now we are transferring all the followers from the local company to the overseas account. But I think this is another subject. But what is, what is important about this uh, case is that um, it's interesting. They came to me and they say, um, okay, Adrian, we have every month um, one to two orders from China in our website in Europe. We don't do anything. We don't communicate. We don't advertise. We, don't, we, we didn't know that uh, Chinese true lovers, they, they know us. Actually, they were very surprised and they asked ask me, what can we do? So I say, we can try to create a WeChat account as a test, recruit some true lovers, and we will see when we push promotion, if they are generating more orders than usual into your, uh, your website. And if it's working well, then it means you can leverage something. So we tried, we succeeded, and because of sense to um, this, uh, this case, now they, 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 decide that they decided to come to China. So now they are opening their business and uh, they're going to open stores in China. It was okay, for them. Crazy. It was for them a good test. At the Are size you of, for the size of this company, investing a uh, hundred thousand um, euros uh, for a year to try uh, a social commerce strategy and see if there is a natural attraction from the followers uh, towards the products. Um, this is something they were willing to 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 uh, to do as a test, and it worked. So now they're coming. So it's interesting. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, could you share about the, the, um, the conversion rate? We, we know about the cost of acquisition 20 GMB. Uh, what do we talk about the conversion rate? Is it 10%, is it 5%, is it 1%? Uh, I think the conversion, the conversion rate um, during promotion period, um, so from the, 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 the traffic in China, from China uh, in Google Analytics can be a little bit more than 5%. So it's super high for e-commerce. Yeah, it's because it's, it's, it's yeah. qualified. All the people they are following the uh, the account. Um, they are interested. They understand the product. And when there is a deal, they will they will just go and buy it because this is an opportunity they don't want to miss. For uh, me to understand the twenty GMB, maybe how you calculate it. Is it the the the, the media buying the the paid social, or is it the total cost of the campaign as a denominator, the ratio? It's the media buying. So okay. we, we have a media budget and we invest it on different channels. And depending on the number of followers we get from these channels, we calculate the cost of acquisition. I see, I see. Okay. Um, I saw in the cases uh, you mentioned on your deck, uh, very different um, tools, including augmented reality, including gaming, a game. Um, could, you, could you give us uh, um, a feedback on those new tools. My, my intuition is that those tools are more used offline to, to create stickiness uh, with, with the people offline in the booth and so on. Could you share a bit, uh, a bit of, um, of your experience with those new tools? Yes. So, I mean, I, I told you uh, the strategy in social commerce is first you recruit the follower and second you engage them and third you sell them stuff. So it's just part of the second, second step. You, uh, you have to um, uh, measure the quality of your portfolio of followers by giving them opportunities of engagement. And game is one of them. So an article, a game, uh, a questionnaire, um, I mean, you, you can have many, many ways 
uh, creative way to engage your, your followers and game is just one of them. So um, after it's true also that once you have a game, you can use it to uh, get more um, attraction to acquire the followers because if it's a very creative game, it can generate uh, virality, so buzz. And then you can, you can also naturally uh, recruit followers from, from this asset. So um, it's one of the way to, um, to bring the, the audience to the, the, the final step of conversion form. I see. I feel that it's, it's much more than game. It's much more sophisticated. What you did for the, the automaker on his booth, what you did for uh, in um, in a travel retail uh, for a French travel retailer. It seems that it, it it it's much more than this. The engagement is augmented reality, is um, is in three D and so on. Um, so, do you feel that it worth the effort to 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 build all this? Oh, it's, a, it's actually a question uh, we, we, you know, it, we don't know what would, ha- we don't know how it could have happened if, we, if we've done it differently. So um, for some of them, it works very well. And uh, we don't know, we, we have no idea if it could have been better with another tool. So I would say that it depends on the, the it depends on two things. It depends also on the expectation of the clients. The, some of our clients, sometimes they want also something innovative because it's part of their KPI to uh, bring to the market I something see. innovative. So, because me, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a businessman. I'm very concrete. So I also, I always tell my clients, if you make the journey too complicated, it's going to be difficult to bring all of these people to the, the to the sales. Because um, if there are 10 steps before you can buy the product, uh, whatever it's a game or a, um, virtual reality uh, game or, or anything if, if you make it too complicated you will you will not have a lot of sales I mean at the end uh, rather than you just uh, you know display a page and got done you have you have your coupon or you have something and then you can you can you can uh, place your order so um, but some of our clients they also want to communicate and uh, they want to show to their audience and the, the, the market that they are innovative company. So they know that they would not get the best performance, but they still don't want. They still want to do it because it's part of their strategy. So um, and then we have some clients when we when we meet them, they say, uh, "Okay, me, uh, I only care about the conversion." Okay, then we don't do games, right? We just do one page and bring immediately the traffic to the final step of conversion. Um, I see. So it depends on their on their on on their uh, objective. It can be part of the branding strategy, which is much more longer term. Um, last question about about Francis, and then I'd like to move on uh, your um, uh, first business in China. Uh, last question is about the competition. I feel there are so many agencies in the market uh, supporting uh, international companies to go to go inside the Chinese market. How do you how do you feel about the competition? How do you how do you differentiate? Is it the reason why you become social commerce? Is because in order to stand out in the competition, to, to be uh, identified clearly? Um, so I think the big, the big difference is that to me, I, I come from, uh, I think it's a good uh, uh, way to talk to the, the, the entrepreneur experience. Um, the, the difference is that I've been an entrepreneur before. So I was on the other side and uh, I was working with agencies. Um, and I know exactly what my client wants because I've been, I've been uh, in their uh, position. Uh, and if, if they really have a concern about their performance, then I know uh, how I can help them. When I was an entrepreneur and I was working with agencies, I, I never had uh, an agency that really cared about uh, my, my concerns, my objective, my metrics. Um, but they were more caring about uh, what they were selling. So uh, the approach we have is very different, is that we, we, we listen to the client and we try to understand uh, what they have to achieve uh, for the year, for the next six months, and then we see if we can help them or not. Um, so that's actually, I think, the big difference. Um, so the result is that's why we're a social commerce uh, agency, actually. Because I think a social media agency doesn't 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 mean anything. I mean, 
doing social media for 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 social media is is useless. It's only uh, burning the money of the brands. Uh, it doesn't bring anything. So we are here to um, we consider social media only as a first step. Um, the second step is how we can make money from this investment because. Every marketing director, every shareholder or CEO or GM, they want to make money from anything. So they want to, they are investing in this channel, this channel. They want to make money from, from these channels. We are, we care about that. So that's actually, I think, the difference. Um, it's, uh, it's a big step for us. And it's actually very challenging uh, for my team because they are not used to that. They are coming from other agencies where uh, the number of followers and the page views was uh, the, the final target. Um, here, actually, we don't we don't really care about this. We we don't think the number of followers or the page views is a um, is a metric that is uh, revealing the performance of the agency. The the sales is one. The the number of clients you acquire, the money you can make from this investment is the most important thing. And I think that's the difference. I see. So your 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 differentiation is on the way you think about a campaign, which is much more result oriented than a, a, a purely branding or purely running media, uh, social media because you have to run a social media. Is what you say? Yeah, I think social. If you have a WeChat account, it cannot. You cannot have. Um, when sometimes I talk with my clients, say, "What? Why do you have this tool? Why do you invest on WeChat?" And then the answer is, "Oh, because." Uh, uh, everyone is doing it. It's not a good answer. This is this is not uh, the way to, um, to to work on WeChat or Weibo. It's the answer has to be because we want to make money from this channel, and uh, it's difficult, but it's challenging. It's difficult, but it's possible. Um, so this is what actually I'm I'm I'm, I'm training my team every day, uh, my account managers, my social media specialists, and even my copywriters. I make my copywriters sales oriented. I explain them that. Uh, when they, they, they are writing a posting where they are creating content, they have to understand that at some point, the final target is to sell. So um, this is actually the, 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 the strong difference is that we, we care about what the client uh, at the end uh, wants. So, and this, I never had an agency. I never had an agency um, really that involved in my business when I was an entrepreneur. So I try to, uh, to do that now that I'm on the other side. We have like 10 minutes uh, maximum, I guess, to talk about uh, Z9H in Chinese, Zhen uh, You managed this company for um, close to five years, as I was mentioning. I'm, I re, I re, um, I re mentioned again uh, what it was doing was flash sales of wines, imported wines. Um, and uh, you have your own website, as far as I remember. You had then your WeChat channel. Um, and could you share a bit of metrics? How much money you raised? Uh, on, on, uh, how much sales did you have? What was the min max per day of, of, of clients? Uh, give a bit of metrics of what it is to start from scratch uh, in the wine industry online between 2012 and 2016. Yeah, and actually, it was lucky for me that it was during this period because it was a, a, a very dynamic period with a lot of mutation in the digital uh, industry. And uh, I'm going to, uh, to give you um, uh, a figure that, that is going to, use to, to, to summarize everything. Um, when we started the business in 2012, uh, WeChat was more like a WhatsApp tool, okay? Like what, what, what WhatsApp is today. And Tmall was, was a, started to be a strong marketplace. Jindon was called uh, 360buy.com and they were selling uh, uh, keyboards and, uh, and, uh, and computers. So it was a very, very different environment. Um, and at that time, the good decision was to build our own standalone, web, our standalone website. So you mean, was a good decision uh, retrospectively or was a good decision because everyone was doing that? It was a good decision at that time taking into account the current environment. Okay. Um, so when I made my business plan at that time, I plan, I plan to have most of my sales coming from my website, right? Uh, I couldn't imagine that I would sell uh, in another tool. And uh, in 2016, okay, just before we, uh, we, we, uh, we stopped the business, um, half of my revenues, they were from WeChat. So it means that my, my website uh, that I, I invested uh, 
money in these websites to to create it, develop it, and maintain it um, was on was mm -hmm. not was not actually the the, the highest point of uh, of um, revenue uh, sources anymore. Uh, it was WeChat, and WeChat actually uh, you don't really need to uh, to invest a, a lot of money to get a, a website and stuff. So um, we between 2012 and 2016 we realized month by month that the most effective channel uh, of sales for us, it was through the social. And that's, that's how I became a specialist of social commerce. Actually, it was not, a, it was not that I wanted, it's just that I had no choice. <laughs> uh, it's just that as an entrepreneur, it was my best channel uh, to, um, to, uh, to sell the products. And uh, yes, the cost of acquisition uh, inside WeChat was way lower than the website and especially my cost of acquisition of orders. So website, how did you acquire clients? Was Baidu, was search, was, how did you do it? Yeah, so we had at that time some Baidu investments, uh, Chihu, I mean, all the, the search engine uh, was one of the way. And then we had also mm -hmm. offline. So we, uh, we were working a lot on um, offline events, trying to uh, um, get clients from offline and convert them, convert them into online later. Um, and WeChat was also a very strong tool. So we were pushing a lot of content, a lot of videos and uh, articles to entertain the audience and uh, try to insert in their mind that we were the coolest place uh, to buy wine uh, in China. So um, at the end, most of my clients, they were actually placing their order from WeChat. So my cost of order was very low inside WeChat. So it was it was very interesting to uh, to uh, to analyze that, and I I didn't do it on I didn't do it um, when I was doing it, and I started to do social commerce. I actually did. I only realized after a few months that I was doing social commerce. It's just that when you're an entrepreneur, you're just trying to find how you can sell your product. You have the pressure on the stock. You need to sell, and uh, and uh, it has to uh, you know it has to go faster. So you you're just taking decision based on the data, and I was just realizing that in, inside WeChat, it was super effective. So I say, okay, let's just put all our efforts inside this channel. Uh, and uh, yeah, at the end, it was one of our strongest uh, um, sales channels. So um, that's how I become an expert of social commerce. And that's why actually also Proces is now a social commerce agency. It's from this experience. Got it. You told me before we started that most of your competitors at that time doing flash sales online for wine have disappeared. Um, meanwhile, in the West, uh, Vente à la Propriété, I think that's one of the, 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 the flash sales in France or others, are still existing, uh, as far as I know. Um, why has it, is it so difficult to create a flash sales website and actually the, uh, the, the Twango, the, the group on website, also have all disappeared, except maybe Mate One. Um, and and how, why is it so difficult? How do you analyze the fact that most of the players have disappeared. Very simple. Very simple. Um, a lot of uh, consumers in Europe, when they go back home, they open a bottle of wine and they just have a, they just have a glass. Um, just because wine is part of the culture in these countries. Uh, in China, it's not the case. So um, when you are building a business model uh, based on a, a final consumer drinking at home, um, and if you don't have these people or if you don't have enough, then you, you cannot build a business. So that's actually, when I started in 2012, this business, I knew that it was not the case, but I thought it would come fast. That was my mistake. Uh, but actually you don't have that many, uh, Chinese consumers that are drinking wine for pleasure at home. It doesn't exist. It's not a lot. So, and if it is, it's not as frequent as in France. So, or in Europe. So that's why that's why a company like uh, um, Vente à la Propriété that you mentioned uh, is still alive, uh, despite of the fact that uh, at the beginning it was not profitable. Uh, for a lot, many, many years it was not profitable. They got uh, backed by uh, investors. Uh, and actually today I, I don't have the data. I don't, have the, I don't know their, their, uh, their financials, but um, they could survive because they have a solid base of users that is actually regularly drinking wine, while here you don't have this, this base. So when you are selling wine online to final consumers in China, 
um, you need to be very patient, and I was not that patient. That's basically the uh, the uh, the, uh, the story. So uh, yes, a lot of um, other of my competitor my competitors at that time. So for me, my competitors they were companies selling wine to Chinese consumers because my my, my brand was uh, a specialist of uh, targeting a Chinese uh, consumer, the final consumer. So we were not targeting uh, the the expatriates. Okay, so that's why our brand is not very famous towards the expatriate community. So my competitors, so also selling wine to Chinese people, uh, most of them, they're gone or they merge with uh, other companies doing also offline business and they are part of a, a bigger uh, project, but not pure online players. Why? Because it's very difficult to, um, to generate a lot of orders from the e-commerce only if you're selling wine. In China. How do you analyze the consumption of wine then? Is it mainly for socializing? It is mainly through restaurants and hotels. Uh, how do you analyze the market in China? Yeah, it's exactly this. It's um, for special occasions. It's um, it's for special occasions, in hotel, restaurants, so on trade business is very strong. Um, and if it's finally for if it's for the final consumer. The consumption um, is not actually as strong as uh, it could be in the European uh, countries or uh, American countries because because wine is not part of their culture. So um, it's it's normal actually it's normal. Um, so yeah, it's it's difficult to analyze and you have to be very careful when you see some some figures and data. But I can tell you it's um, it's it's like that. And even actually when the wine is. Um, being consumed, you're not even sure it's really consumed. I'm going, I'm, I've been to a lot of weddings um, in, uh, in China because uh, I have a, a Chinese family here. Um, every time I, I like to check um, what is left in the bottle of every table uh, during the Chinese wedding. And you can see that most of the bottles, they are still uh, full. So they open, they open the wine, they, they pour a little bit, but they, they don't drink that much. They drink more of their uh, baijiu, their own alcohol, and it's, it's, not, um, it's not a beverage that is actually today um, an important beverage for them. Interesting, interesting. I think it will be, but it's going to take a lot of time. And uh, so it's difficult to leverage an investment today in, uh, in, this, this, uh, in this industry for pure online players. Thank you very much, Adrian, for your time. It's uh, already one hour, I think, uh, even more. Um, so thanks, thanks, thank you for 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 sharing. Uh, congratulations for your journey. Um, I see that in your new role, actually, uh, you are still an entrepreneur because you are repositioning the, the company in China. Uh, what we call an intrapreneur, I, I feel it would would fit well uh, yeah. with the way you are be, you are you 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 are managing. Um, Thank you everyone for listening to us and I hope you all enjoyed uh, the talk.